All right, here we go. It's time for another world-renowned, world-famous Keep Talking segment. That's where I go inside the studios of my friends, my colleagues, my brothers and sisters in the talk radio and podcast world, and we talk about their hottest topics. My next guest is the co-host of The Morning Answer with Jen and Grant, which you can hear weekdays 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on AM870, The Answer in Los Angeles. Jennifer Horn, thanks for joining us. Well, big fan. You're doing a great job with the show, and I hope you come on the radio with us in L.A. I, absolutely. Thank you so much. No, we put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you, you know how this works. And what is the hottest topic on your morning show right now? You know, it has to be the recall of George Gascon and the recall of Chesa Bodine. We were uh, just about a week ago on Tuesday, California had a primary and uh, the people of San Francisco, the Democrats in San Francisco, voted to recall Chesa Bodine by about 20 percentage points. It wasn't even close. And as you know, Andrew, San Francisco is not a conservative bastion. So uh, these were Democrats who said enough is enough and voted to make real change for themselves in the city of San Francisco. And now we have another DA in Los Angeles, George Gascon, who is making headlines each and every day. People are on to him. He is one of those George Soros funded prosecutors. There are 75 of them sprinkled across the country. And you may have heard a really tragic story. Just this week in 24 hours, we had three police officers shot in the line of duty by these career criminals. One of them, thankfully, in the San Fernando Valley is in critical condition and is expected to make it. But two police officers in El Monte died over on Tuesday evening. And uh, they approached a suspect who literally ambushed them. He uh, was trying to get at his wife, who he had stabbed the day before. This guy was in and out of jail, a gang member. And uh, he had weapons charges against him. He was not supposed to be in the possession of a firearm. And he killed these two officers. He himself ended up dying. But when you reveal the backstory, it's all a very similar tale. It's all in the wake of George Gascon, who has let people out of prison who need to be there. And uh, he certainly values the criminals more than he values the victims. And this is just the latest story. Unfortunately, it's a heavy time in LA where these criminals are just empowered to do whatever they want and people are getting killed, including law enforcement. And so the good news, and I always like to talk about the good news, is that uh, George Gascon and the recall effort, it's the second time they've tried to collect signatures and as of yesterday, they have 566,000 verified signatures because they are pre-verifying them, which is what they need to get the recall on the effort later, or excuse me, on the ballot later this year. And uh, hopefully, and they have till uh, July 6th to turn in the signatures. They will get more to get that buffer because you know that there will be some protection for George Gasco and they'll try to keep him in place and they'll try to throw out as many signatures as they can. But it seems that this time, finally, the recall might actually take. Wait, they actually they actually care about 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 signatures being valid. <laughs> that, that's a new one. But, imagine, you know, imagine that. You, you know what's amazing about conservative-minded talk radio, and I actually said this on my radio show today, and it's a it's a certain amount of guilt that I live with. I, I've said on the air that what is bad for America, or in this case, bad for a city, is good for conservative-minded yeah. radio, and I and it goes and it kind of goes like this. There are going to be people that would never consider listening to one of our programs because they're they're on the left or they think they hear that those people say crazy things just to get ratings. Mm -hmm. But then this stuff happens and the media, the local media is 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 kind of ambivalent or even protective of someone like Gascon or Boudin. And then people like you are on the air saying what needs to be said. And people go, wait a second. She's she's saying what I'm thinking. Right, and they, yep. and they and they come to you, but they come to you because they feel lost in the other uh, other outlets of media, and they're looking for a voice that's like that's speaking to them, and that's that's how people find conservative voices in media. And I'm going to tell you, Andrew, as much as I'm an optimist, and uh, you know, people say a lot of things about California. I was born and raised here, a Valley girl for life. You know, hanging out at the at the shopping mall in the San Fernando Valley for my teenage years, but. I'll tell you this much, there is hope for California. I know we are a blue state right now, but for the very reasons that you said, when po I, I look at politics like a boomerang and when they push too far in a state like California, people start to snap back. They snap back to the middle when they realize that the quality of life issues, Glenn Youngkin called them kitchen table issues in Virginia, but the quality of life issues like the economy, like crime, like schools, being able to send your kids to play in the front yard, 
that matters to people. And that doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican, that just matters to people. And that's how people find, I think, talk radio, it drives spirited conversation. It's also politically what I think is gonna save our state. I mean, one of the other takeaways that no one is talking about in the mainstream media is this surge of Hispanic voters that are coming out and voting for Republican candidates, maybe for the first time, many of them. And if you look around in California, and if you can believe it, they are still counting votes here because so what we do, we act like a third world nation every once in a while in this day, but they're still counting votes. Wait, and, should, I be, uh, should I be using for sure when we say these sure, things? Like, for totally. sure, like gag me with a spoon. <laughs> no, to I totally. To accent, but no, totally gnarly. Totally gnarly. Let's catch a wave, dude. But uh, I will tell you that in certain districts in California, they created because of redistricting, a new congressional district, it's um, California 13, 61% Hispanic in Northern California. And that district went 52% Republican, 48% Democrat. That tells me right now that there are more and more Latino and Hispanic voters who are waking up and who are saying, you know what? I don't care about having the D by the candidate's name anymore. I'm gonna vote for candidates that are, that are sane, that are talking about things that matter to me and that aren't worried about biological males swimming in, uh, in college sports. They're worried about putting food on the table and affording gasoline. And that is really what's resonating with people. And I think a lot of voters who are told we were their enemy they find out we're not only not their enemy, they agree with us. So are you getting new, are you getting new listeners, like callers that are saying, I'm a new listener? Yeah, actually, there are a lot of people. And you know, it's like, it's the honor of my life. And you know how this is. When somebody comes up to you and says, how are you voting in this election? Thank you for helping me figure this issue out. We're getting more and more of that every single day. People who are walking away from the Democrat Party. I had a listener call in on, on the program this morning and he was talking to Grant. He was talking to me and he said, you know what? He said, I felt so lost. I was a, I was a liberal here in California. I would vote occasionally. And when I did, I would just vote for the party, you know, just vote for the party. I didn't really understand the issues. He's like, but I was burglarized. I, I had someone commit a crime against me. And all of a sudden I felt very lost because it happened to me. And he said, I started digging around. I found your program. I voted for the first time as a Republican last Tuesday, he said, in the election. And it, it matters. I think people are finding us because it's just sane. And I don't even care about party preference so much. It's just doing what's right and what's gonna keep people safe and keep people thriving. You know what happens is like, it, it kind of goes like this. It, the people that thought plastic bags were really bad are the same people that have filled the streets with human feces and, and needles, right? Amen. Like, like, like if you were a progressive, because you're like, I want bike paths and I want to ban those evil plastic bags. Now you can't ride your bike because your bike path is filled up with trash and, and with human feces. Right, exactly. <laughs> so you, 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 if you voted for a Democrat because you thought plastic bags were bad, and then you went out in the street and saw what Democrats actually gave you, you you know, those Republicans with their plastic bags weren't so bad. And their plastic straws. And right? I, re I, and I recycle getting... them, by the way. I recycle my plastic bags. Me too. Because exactly. We're, we're not evil. Conservatives actually conserve. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about hating the planet. Conservative. It's... Exactly. And it always gets me crazy because it feels like the far left that have created this whole religion around climate change, they would rather not see human beings. I mean, I think they really actually want to wipe us all off the planet so that the sea turtles can swim. I, I don't know. I just, I don't understand where the left pushes us, but certainly it's a very good place. We're like a Petri dish in California where you can see how these policies fail miserably. And I'll tell you, speaking of our homeless problem, and you said they're covering the streets. Do you know how genius the homeless people in Southern California are? They have these encampments that are tricked out. They actually- I only got 30 seconds. We got to make this fast. I hate to do that to you. Tapped into electrical poles so that they can put up big screen TVs in their tents. It's a true story. 